Welcome everyone, today we're looking at DCS and the Su-25 Russian fighter jet. Over the next 10 minutes I'm going to show you how to fly it and we'll take a look at the features in this entry level fighter plane. So even though there is an abstraction layer in this plane, so you press a keyboard shortcut and the virtual pilot presses the physical switches, it's still quite a deep simulation. We press right shift and L to switch on the plane's electrics and that noise you hear there is the radar warning system. We'll go into that a little bit later on. But if you press right out and comma, you can turn the volume down. We close the canopy with left control and C and then you press right shift and home to start the engines. You can see the two green lights right there on the dashboard and when ignition is complete, the lights will go out. A quick note about the radar warning, if you press right shift and R it will filter only to the targets that actively have a lock on you, which means you get less nuisance activations. As you can see there the engine lights have gone out and the engines have started, so let's go flying. Taxiing is just like any other aircraft, you use your throttle and rudder controls to steer and press W or the key you've assigned for the brakes. And of course takeoff is identical to any other plane in any other flight sim. Pull back on the stick when you are going fast enough. The plane is super, super heavy uh, with all the bombs and missiles underneath the wings. Press G when you have positive rate to raise the landing gear and you're away. So we'll quickly cover the basic stuff. If you press 1 you'll go into nav mode on the HUD. Nav mode follows the waypoints in your flight plan and you can press control and back tick to cycle through those waypoints. Activate autopilot with left, out and six and your plane will start to follow the plan to the next waypoint. If you're flying manually, just keep that reticle on the HUD in the center of your crosshairs. Once the plane has flown its waypoints, it will automatically go into return to base mode and when you get close to the runway, it automatically switches to localizer and the autopilot will fly all these phases of flight for you. I'm gonna disengage the autopilot and press one to manually switch into return to base mode. This will then point us back to base. You can use control back tick here to cycle through the preloaded airports and point yourself towards any one of them. And again, the autopilot works through all phases of flight, so whichever base you select, the autopilot will fly towards it, then automatically fly the localizer at destination. Let's take a look at some of the more military stuff. So if we press seven, we'll switch the plane into air to ground mode. And this is the mode we use to attack targets on the ground. If we look to the bottom right corner here, you can see the loadout of the missiles and bombs currently on our plane. You press D to switch your currently selected weapon. HPC and YD are missiles and B are bombs. If we look over to the panel on the left, we can control how many bombs we fire and how often. So control C controls the how many bombs you drop dial from one to many. And the V key controls how often bombs are dropped if you have more than one dropping at a time. We'll look at this in more detail in a minute or two. The first way of dropping bombs is CCRP, which is Continuously Computed Release Point. Here you line the reticle up over your target, you hold down the fire button. At the drop point you'll hear a tone in the cockpit and the bombs will drop as we will demonstrate here. And if all is well, you'll see smoke rising from your target and you'll get a confirmation it's been destroyed and you can continue on your way. There is also CCIP mode, which we won't demonstrate, but that's continuously computed impact point. Once the reticle is over your target and you get launch authorized on your heart, you just press fire to drop the bomb. The last option on the left hand dial is the KMGU submunitions dispenser. This will drop your bombs in a line, which is great for taking out convoys and that works in CCRP and CCIP. Missiles are super straightforward, you just select them on your weapon type and line the reticle up over your target, hit fire, it's great fun, stuff blows up. And again if all has gone well you will see smoke rising from your target in the background. I'm going to demonstrate how to use targeted missiles, even though this plane isn't equipped with any at the moment. Press O to turn on the targeting computer. 
use the comma, period, backslash and semicolon keys on your keyboard to move the reticle and the TV screen shows the area covered by the reticle on the HUD. You can zoom the screen in with equals and zoom out with the minus key. Once over your target you can press enter to lock the target on the screen. For normal guided missiles you wait until the arrow is within the two green lines on the left side of the HUD then press fire. If you have laser guided missiles press right shift and O to switch the laser designator on. Then once the arrow on the left side of the HUD is between those two green lines, you would hold fire until the missile reaches its target. You can see once you've picked a target, the screen just follows that target even as your aircraft moves around. And you can also press CTRL and O to activate night vision mode if you're flying in the dark. We'll demonstrate the air-to-air -air capability of the SU-25, so you press 6 to go into air-to-air -air mode. This is really simple, you just line up crosshairs on the HUD over your target, and once you hear a tone... Press fire to release the missile. If you're close enough to your target, if the missile is faster than your target, and if you're a better shot than me, you will see the missiles chase your target down and blow it up. If the enemy is out of range or deploys countermeasures, your missiles will just explode in mid-air. Let's just take a closer look at that radar warning system for air-to-air -air fighting. The lights around the top light up and show you the direction of the aircraft that's locked onto you. The indicators on the plane graphic itself show if that aircraft is above or below you. And in the ring around the aircraft, the more of those lights that are lit, the closer the enemy is to you. You can activate countermeasures by pressing E. With those active, pressing the insert key deploys chaff. And pressing the delete key deploys flares. In air to ground mode, and I believe also air to air mode, you can use cannons by pressing C and then you just hold down the fire button until things explode. And that pretty much covers the last of the weapon systems in the SU-25. Let's look at the final phase of flight which is landing. So we used the return to base mode here in autopilot to take us back to the airfield and when it got close to the airfield it automatically switched to localizer, started following that We've now disengaged the autopilot, put the landing flaps down with Shift F and drop the gear with G. As we approach the airport, we pass the outer marker and we'll try and get it down somewhere on the runway, hopefully on the numbers. Press P to deploy the braking parachute, and once you're going slow enough you can use the friction brakes, which is W. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about the SU-25 in 10 minutes. There are a couple of things we haven't covered here, which is gun pods and active countermeasures. But those work in a fairly similar way to the normal guns and missiles, and there are specific tutorials within DCS to cover those if you're interested. So now you know the basics of flying a Russian fighter jet, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and remember, until next time, you can always go around, unless you get shot down. Take care.